Punk edits. Hear me out. Punk edits. Okay, we've all seen them. You know, those pictures of celebrities and fictional characters with a bunch of tattoos and piercings and colored hair photoshopped on? I have become fixated on punk edits and the question, why are punk edits? It feels like they've been around almost as long as I've been on the internet. At one point, people made so many punk edits of YouTubers that they started sticking on a bunch of fake tattoos and piercings in real life in response. And still to this day, there are Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram accounts dedicated to making punk edits. However, I will say, I think they've clearly reached a point where the intention behind them is humor. People are making punk edits of Obama and Shrek because they think it's funny. Everyone knows that the Tumblr punk edits of Jan and Phil and Disney princesses and One Direction have just been around forever. 2013 Tumblr was just like that. But why? Why? Are we sure about that? Like, how old are punk edits really and where did they start? I had my suspicions that they had their roots in some good, good, earnest 2010s fandom cringe. And so I set out to investigate just how it is that we ended up here. But before we begin our deep dive into that, I've got to tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. What a VPN does is keep your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. A VPN is also an absolute must have if you use public Wi-Fi a lot. You don't know who's in that public Wi-Fi? Another thing a VPN does is mask your IP address, which is absolutely essential for privacy. It's also really useful for getting around blocked content in your country. Surfshark has 3,200 servers in 100 countries, and you can choose exactly where in the world you want the internet to think you are. If you're on holiday and you can't access all of your favorite sites and streaming services from where you are, you can switch it back to your home country, and you can even use your Surfshark account on an unlimited number of devices. Right now, you can get an exclusive Surfshark holiday deal. Go to surfshark.deals eons and enter promo code eons to get up to six months free. Yes, I did read that correctly. Six months, free. that's a pretty good deal. That link for your clicking is in the description down below. And now I return you to your regularly scheduled content. Do you want to kiss? Not with those things on. Uh, uh, not the face! <laughs> Don't go right for the face! Oh, these are not saying what I like. No. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop fangs. <laughs> Why is that step one? Because you're. Put, okay, let me... You said doodle. Okay, not. Let's not start with the face. <laughs> no! <laughs> Stop it! Oh my god, living my ebony darkness fantasy. I think that might almost be a bit too low. It's not going to show up super well. Well, I'll put it on your neck too. Okay, perfect. Uh, that's bad. I did a bad job, but you know what? It's that's there. Okay. Right. She peaked. Perfect. <laughs> She's a little sultry. You can probably do like a classic spider web somewhere. That's easy to draw, right? What does that say? Cat mom. Oh, yay! Scorpio girl tattoo of my dreams. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't know! This is honestly surprising. This looks like a sperm. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Stop moving! His eyes are detached from his body. That's cool. <laughs> the, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's definitely giving crab a little bit. Yeah. You know what? Art is all about interpretation. Whoa. Love it. Love it? Yeah. I think it's it looks okay. Are oh, you giving me like a throat scar? Yeah. Hot. I need one that says MCR, like here or here, I think. I misjudged. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, oh, it's like you just love McDonald's. Yeah. Mick who? I don't know. <laughs> I hope this comes off. Or else, Christmas dinner with my family. Woohoo! Woo! You're welcome. Yeah, just like squint really hard and look into a tiny camera viewfinder and like, you know, she's okay. Oh, are you tattooing my armpits? Yes. Oh. I'm giving you a band. Oh, goodness. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Gonna give you ink poisoning, girl. Ooh, date night. Are you drawing a Goomba? Yeah. Yeah? It was a mushroom. Oh, it's a mushroom. I, I miscalculated. I'm gonna actually get a tattoo of this. As someone who has done a lot of research into alternative subcultures, I feel the need to point out that these are not punk edits. 
like in the sense of what punk originally was in the 1970s. Aesthetic wise, their emo edits, punks absolutely did not have like the stretched ears and the lip piercings and the sleeve tattoo with the clock and a lion and a rose. They had dirty secondhand flannels and DIY patches and leather and studs and shocking hairstyles. So my working theory about why they're called punk edits and not emo edits is that emo was kind of a bad word to use when it was initially coined. People whose style we would now very easily call emo would never have identified themselves as emo in the 2000s. In 2006, Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway calls herself a goth and not emo, despite the fact that she is emo with some like vampire mall goth hot topic corset tendencies in her fashion. Goth was a much more respectable label to use, same with punk. So around this time, yes, young people were definitely doing a new alternative subculture and listening to new music and wearing different things, which was emo. However, a lot of them still relied on the street cred of these older labels like punk and goth, even though that's not technically what they were doing. So considering that punk edits came out of around the same time period, I'm assuming this is why they're called punk edits, despite being recognizably emo to the modern eye. I will continue to refer to them as punk edits throughout this video because that's what they're called, even though it's technically wrong, I just wanted to be pedantic for a minute. So the thing that intrigued me to do a little digging here was the prevalence of punk edits and punk AU fanfic stories in the One Direction fandom, like the early 2010s One Direction fandom. I noticed this while I was making my video about the sold to One Direction trope. While researching that video, I saw a lot of stories which had punk edits as their covers on Wattpad and Quotep. One Direction goes punk, and what if One Direction was bad boys, and what if Harry Styles tied me up in his basement, kidnapped by dark punk One Direction? So I thought, what's with all the punk edits? <laughs> And here we are. I asked myself, what came first? The punk edit or punk AU fanfiction? How did these things become so intertwined? Who came up with such things in the first place? To get to the bottom of this, I started doing some digging into fanfiction history, hoping to trace the punk AU back far enough to kind of reveal the timeline of what happened here. I returned to Quotev, this time to look specifically for punk AUs and punk edits. I wasn't looking specifically for One Direction ones, but that's pretty much exclusively what I found, with some five seconds of summer sprinkled in there as well. But vast majority One Direction comes up when you search punk. I did come across some RPF about other bands, other bands that are actually alternative, like My Chemical Romance came up, Blackville Brides came up, Green Day came up, a few other ones. I saw Blink-182 a few times. But in that case, it's not really a punk AU. There's no alternate universe. It's those bands already do the tattoos and the angst and all of that stuff. So searching for punk on Quotev, I pretty much only found band RPF. So I decided to go over to Wattpad. Wattpad is a much more popular site, has more of a diversity of fandoms. It is known for being a haven for RPF, where fanfiction.net and AO3 were not, but it also has a lot of fiction fandoms on there. And still, on Wattpad, I found vast majority punk One Direction, some five seconds of summer. However, some other examples as well. I found punk Naruto, punk Harry Potter, punk Attack on Titan, punk Supernatural, punk Tinkerbell X Reader Yuri. But still, the oldest ones I could find, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm doing that. The oldest ones I could find date back to around 2012. The trend seems to have exploded around 2013 to 2014, but the oldest ones are only 2012. At this point, I'm starting to get just a little bit fed up of looking at pictures of man in hat with fake sleeve tattoos and reading the phrase psychopath Harry Styles bad, but I would, I would not give up because just because it does, it does seem like it was uncommon for people to use the phrase punk or punk AU or punk edit in fanfiction spaces before 2013. That does not mean there aren't relevant predecessors. I refuse to believe this all just happened in a vacuum one day. Like, fandom spaces are all so interconnected and somehow this is all Star Trek's fault. I just haven't figured it out yet. My beloved, my immortal, is obviously... A I never thought about it this way before, but it's obviously a punk AU. What if all the Harry Potter characters were emo goths who make out at MCR concerts instead of going to class? Using the term punk AU right now to mean like any kind of subcultural AU. And that was written in 2006. I just read a post um, from my most recent fan fiction video where he's complaining about like all these teenage girls in the fandom who write like bad pseudo goth BDSM about Draco. And that was in 2008 or 2009. So obviously, the punk AU, even if it wasn't called that, predates Psychopath Harry Styles with snakebite piercings ties me up in his basement 2014. Fanfiction.net is the oldest, still functioning and intact, easily searchable fanfiction site. So, 
let's go over there and see what we can find. And we found it. it we, when I searched for the oldest fanfictions on fanfiction.net using the word punk, I found a number of fics from 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003-ish, where characters will turn punk or start punk bands, or they're just like in 90s high school and some of the characters are alternative now. Gordo, straight A's and directing career. Well, how about he explores a new side of him, a seriously punk side of him? All right, this is about Legolas in the year 2001 with a bunch of punk rock friends. Wow, it sounds stupid, but I think it's kind of funny. This is a chapter book of Hermione's change from the good little girl to the punk crazy kid. It's gonna be pretty funny if I do say so myself. Cloud has been called a punk a few times during the game, but what if he really did become one? Snow White and the Seven Spooky Kids, the rave punk version of Snow White. Zelda died, Link is asked to once again save the world, but what will happen when he he meets a rebellious punk girl who hates people. When a bad breakup forces Rory to abandon everything familiar and start a new life on her own, can one determined musician convince her he's worth a chance? Nine guys and one annoying punk chick. Yep, the sucked into the Lord of the Rings trope again, but this chick's no Mary Sue. In fact, the Fellowship is debating killing her because she's so damn annoying. Arwen goes punk. Kinda self-explanatory, ain't it? Now go rate and review. AU song fic, skater boy. Inuyasha is in love with Kikyo. She's a cheerleader and he is a punk. The Marauders, Lily and Arabella are a punk band. Swearing and pure insanity included. He was a punk, she did ballet. What could anyone say other than that? But when their feelings for each other come out, will they be able to withstand adversity to be together? Together, or will they give in to peer pressure and live alone? AU, what if Bulma is a ska punk star from Earth? Just an ordinary London punk rock band with ordinary college students trying to pay the rent. Ordinary students named Holmes, Watson, and Moriarty. Four teenagers that could not be more different are brought into Middle Earth. Tia, a punk goth math whiz. Ithelfia, fantasy nerd with a flair for foreign languages. Damon, goth stray and overly street smart. John, Sorry, still working on that last one. Kagome is a punk rocker who just transferred to Sakura High, and Inuyasha is the most popular guy in school. What happens when Inuyasha delves deep into Kagome's past? The bad punk and preppy cheerleader pairing is popular. Although sometimes it is gender swapped, sometimes it is scary punk girl, manic pixie dream girl type with more basic man. Sometimes it's very much like weird goth boy falls for cheerleader girl. Um, it's a funny trope. It's I see why it's appealing to people to, to put their favorite characters in this situation. Just like the sold to XYZ bad boy character trope, um, although commonly associated with a massive explosion in One Direction fix around 2013-2014, the Punk AU2 dates back to some of the earliest days of online fandom. And where there's fan fiction, there's always fan art. I found a lot of really good, um, like early punk interpretation fan art on DeviantArt. Here's an emo boy looking Draco from 2007. Here's the Marauders from Harry Potter as a punk band. Is Sirius wearing new rocks? Here's goth Harry, Ron, and Hermione from 2006. Yes, seemingly unrelated to my immortal. Edward and Jacob. Emo love story AU. Naruto punk clothing. Oh look, another pair of shoes that I own. I still have questions because how do we go from regular fan art to the very specific style that is punk edits? While I was researching this video, I reached out to K.R. Forsyth again, the author who wrote one of the original Soul to One Direction fan fictions, who I talked to for that video. I knew they were very active in a lot of the kinds of fan fiction spaces that I I'm talking about again in this video. I was not, I was born and bred a fanfiction.net kid. So I went out on a limb, I reached out to KR Forsyth again and I said, do you remember anything about punk edits? And they made a really interesting suggestion, which was that I should look into Polyvor collages and the Disney fandom. And I think, I think this was the link that I was missing. Polyvor was the site that was shut down in 2018. The site is still, it's, it was like bought by someone else. It's like a clothing store now. So if you go there, it's not the site that it used to be. It was like this fashion and design website that had this really, really popular feature where you could create collages of items. So you could create outfits, mood boards. It's these things. Like if you've been on the internet, you've probably seen a Polyvore collage before there absolutely rampant on Pinterest for sure. And Polyvore collages were pretty popular with fanfiction writers because it allowed them to plan out characters' aesthetics and even specific outfits. It wasn't uncommon in certain fanfiction spaces for authors to include links at the beginning or end of chapters being like, this is what all the characters are wearing in this chapter. Here's one quote to have users tirade against the popularity of doing that. I'm so sick of Polyvore. 
herpted her. I woke up and put on this. Motherfucker, describe that shit. Don't show me pictures. This isn't a picture book. Thanks. I used to work with children, so trust me, I've seen my fair share of fucking picture books. Try writing it out instead of sending me to fucking Polyvore. I used to do reviews on OneDirectionFanFiction.org, and yes, I took off points if I saw that shit in a story. Today was the day Andy Beersack had personally invited me to interview his band, The Black Veil Brides, for my YouTube channel. I struggled to out to wear, but my girlfriend Star put together an outfit for me, probably girlfriend in the in the, the way that straight girls say. For a minute there, I was like, "Wow, representation!" And then I realized that straight girls also call each other call their friends girlfriend sometimes. Okay, while I wiggle into some lace-up, patched-up gray skinnies with a graphic print tank top, she straightened my dark hair. She followed me around the room, trying to paint black lipstick around my lip piercings as I grabbed some jewelry and a leather Blackville brides jacket I'd won in a giveaway. Four sentences, and it's already better. I fucking hate polyvore, and if I catch you using it, I'm going to assume you're lazy. No joke, mate. Don't use pictures. Fucking paint me a picture with your words. Another thing which Polyvore allowed fans to do was create outfits kind of inspired by the aesthetic of fantasy characters, something which Kara Forsyth told me was extremely popular in Disney fandom specifically. It was called Disney Bounding after Tumblr user Disney Bound who popularized it. Her real name was Leslie Kay. It all started when she posted a Rapunzel-inspired Polyvore collage around mid-2011. People liked it. She immediately got a request to do a Beauty and the Beast one, so she made that one. She got more and more requests until her entire blog was dedicated to Disney-inspired Polyvore outfits. And the reason why there was such an audience for this in Disney fandom specifically, was that Disney parks actually ban all guests over the age of 14 from wearing costumes. I imagine that this is because they have their own hired performers at the Disney parks, and it would get pretty confusing if a lot of other people were running around in costumes as well. Therefore, a lot of fans were into creating outfits kind of inspired by their favorite characters rather than being accurate cosplays. And you know, you could theoretically play around with a character's aesthetic, create things like twee hipster Peter Pan or Hot Topic Mulan. It gave fans this idea to kind of interpret their favorite characters through the lens of modern fashion trends. And this normalization of messing around with characters' aesthetics is probably part of the reason why the Disney fandom gave birth to punk edits. As we know, people were writing punk goth rave girl Snow White fanfiction in 2002, and there was fan art of that kind of thing as well too. But come 2011, messing around with characters' aesthetics was one, common and popular, and two, it was easy. You didn't have to be really good at drawing anymore. All you needed was a decent eye for fashion and aesthetics, and some time to click around with buttons on Polyvore. Or perhaps Photoshop. Do you see where I'm trying to go with this? I'm connect- I'm connecting them. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but- I've connected them. I'm sure that some of you remember the Disney punk edits that were just so ungodly popular on Tumblr around like 2013. Especially Ariel. There were so many Ariel ones. I don't know why she was a particular muse for these people. Maybe because she already had the unnaturally red hair. I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Where I remember seeing a lot of these types of pictures was on Tumblr. Sp specifically aesthetic Tumblr. And I know that I called them technically emo edits rather than punk edits at the beginning of this video, and for the most part I'd say they are. But there's a, there's some of them that also skew into being hipster edits, which I think makes sense given how popular they were with aesthetic Tumblr, also known as hipster Tumblr. The appeal of Disney punk edits obviously went way beyond just fandom, because even if you weren't, like, unironically into Disney princesses anymore, it still seems kind of fun and edgy to Photoshop tattoos and piercings and cigarettes into your childhood movies. And Tumblr did. They did. They made punk edits by the thousands. As always, thank you, Tumblr. But where did it start? Who made the first Disney punk edits. Dark Disney Ariel, December 2012. Ariel Punk, August 2012. Princess Style Rocker Ariel, July 2012. But no, we can still go earlier! Aladdin Punk, March 2012. Wait, no, no, what's this? What, what, what is, what is, it's plagiarism with a steel chair! May 2011. This image is posted on Tumblr, and this post shook Tumblr. It shook the creator of the image, too. It got over 20,000 notes in around 24 hours, which seems like this was more notes than he ever dreamed of getting on a post. However, he also reveals to us that this is not, in fact, the first Disney punk edit and that he got the idea after he saw this image. The creator of this image calls it Skater Pan, and it is the first Disney punk edit that I can find. And after painstakingly tracking it down through deviant art, 
clicking through deviant art punk edits, discovering a deviant art punk edit plagiarism scandal, stalking the archive of the guy who made the Aladdin image. I realized that Skater Pan is just fucking on Heritage Posts. It's just, it's on Heritage Posts, but hey, feels good to be peer reviewed. I am confidently calling these two images some of the first punk edits on Tumblr. I will put them on pedestals next to each other because Skater Pan is really only older than Aladdin by about a day. And they were both very, very popular. I also found this post, which is around a week older than Skater Pan and Aladdin and was reblogged by the creator of Skater Pan. So possibly another predecessor or inspiration for those images. However, it doesn't entirely feel like a punk edit. Like it doesn't entirely feel in line with the conventions of a punk edit. And it doesn't have that many notes, at least not compared to the other two posts. So. I'm pinpointing the solidification of the punk edit style May 2011 on Tumblr with these two images. From there, punk edits absolutely exploded across Tumblr, turbocharged by the universal recognizability of Disney characters. Tons of punk edit request blogs showed up. Celebrities quickly became like the most popular demographic of people to punk edit. Lots of very popular actors, band members, YouTubers, politicians, if you're feeling crazy. So in conclusion, what have we learned today, kids? The punk, goth, emo, whatever label you want to use, subcultural fanfiction AUs, go back to at least the early 2000s. The earliest example I can find is from exactly 2000. Punk AUs did not have a name yet and were not really a recognizable large trend yet. Then in 2011, the popularity of Disney bounding and polyvore collages really normalized this idea of kind of messing around with characters' aesthetics and using modern fashion. This then influenced the creation of early punk edits, which very quickly breached containment due to the universal recognizability of Disney characters. One could actually say, perhaps, uh, that this was a rare moment of coexistence and cultural exchange between hipster Tumblr and fandom Tumblr. They both loved a good aerial punk edit heartwarming. The punk edit as an art form was born from this rare collaboration between hipster Tumblr and fandom Tumblr. It became extremely common to see punk edits of all kinds of popular characters and celebrities. And thus we come full circle and are blessed with all kinds of punk edit covers for Wattpad RPF. Especially One Direction though, a lot of One Direction. But that is not... We are not yet at the end of the punk edit timeline because you see art and online fandom are currently in the process of being revolutionized by AI. Yes, there's AI punk edits. I know that at least some of you guys have seen the Harry Potter ghost punk AI generated video. A lot of people have sent it to me going, haha, my immortal. In light of humans no longer making the art, I guess I wanted to talk about humans making the art in a weird niche that tickles my fancy. And also I, I let my girlfriend draw some kind of horrific crab scorpion creation of science on me right before Christmas dinner with my family. So um, let's all hope that that goes super well for me. Thank you so much for watching this video, my friends, and I will see you in another one very soon.